Thank you. Um, today, I'm going to step back in a role that I used to have a long time ago as a registered nurse. And um, I'm speaking on caregiving and patient advocacy. I've been a nurse for a long time, since I was 17 years old. I actually was married to a physician, so I got to see the workings of, of the medical field from the inside and how everybody felt about it. And I got to see it from a patient's perspective as well, you know, young mother, that kind of thing. Um, years later, I had a very personal experience as a caregiver. Um, Mm. Um, I'll tell you, even that taxed my experience as a healthcare professional. And I, uh, I felt as though I was a novice, as though I was a newbie in that. Um, my mother uh, developed cancer, and I slept by her side for 18 months while she... Um, well, she went through that process and died in 2008. It taught me a lot. And I learned firsthand how difficult it is to care for a loved one uh, over an extended period of time. It takes its toll. One day your life is clicking along and it is just, it is just wonderful. Everything that is happening to you is great. We live in the greatest country in the world. You know, you're healthy, you're, and all of a sudden, your life changes completely. When my mother got sick, I, I actually had a call from a neighbor of hers who said, you need to come, your mom needs help. I threw some things into my uh, computer bag and flew up there thinking, she was taking care of my stepfather, and I would, would sort of fill in and take over. That wasn't the case. She was very, very sick, and I didn't go back to my home for two years. So it was quite um, an experience, and I have to say that I would do it a hundred times over again if I had the opportunity. She was just that kind of person. Uh, things that I gained from that opportunity... I, relate, I gained that relationships matter, people matter, people in your lives matter. You come out better on the other side when you sacrifice yourself for someone else that you love. There isn't any way that you can't gain from that experience, no matter how hard it is. There's no doubt the medical system is broken. And it's not just the parts that we hear about on, that are bantered around on the news. Um, regarding the confusing, confusing and convoluted information that we hear uh, every day on our news about the medical care system, I would highly recommend, I'm going to do a little commercial here, I'm going to highly recommend that you uh, become proactive and you read a wonderful book and I neglected to bring it up here. And Paul, would you raise that book for me here? It's called, um, it's called Catastrophic Care, How American Healthcare Killed My Father and How We Can Fix It by David Goldhill. It's a wonderful book. It doesn't talk about just his experience with his father. It taught, he actually, as a Harvard graduate and businessman, studied our healthcare system and has some, some very good explanations, and some very good suggestions about how it can be fixed. Every one of our congressmen should read this, this uh, book. Mr. Goldhill's father died from infections that were inquired, acquired um, at a hospital. He was just one of over 200,000 people a year who die from such infections. Now, we just had a memorial service nationally, ever, nationally televised um, for the victims in a school, the tragic shooting of 20-plus of 20 victims in a school. No one memorializes the 200,000 people who are dying in our hospitals every day from, ne from a neglective system.
My 82-year-old, five-foot-tall, frail mother contracted two infections, one in a hospital and one in a rehab center. She had spirit, and not only that, she had perseverance, and she had uh, a body that just, just fought the, um, after watching the errors and the oversights, um, I, I have a couple of things that I need to say. That I am convinced that you need a vigilant, thinking, fearless advocate when you're a patient. And I say fearless. You need someone who is thinking, someone who is willing to think someone who's willing to look at what's happening and then speak up if they see something that isn't right. Advanced directives are important. Power of attorneys, living wills. These documents are meant to secure proper treatment for you at your end of life, but not just at the end of your life. No matter how young you are, you should have these documents, and they should be, they should be where someone can get to them. Uh, you need to have your, your, your desires down on paper, what you want, what you expect, so that just in case you can't say it yourself, that someone else can do it for you. Then, first it's important to understand the ins and outs of the various documents, and that's very important. Just don't go to your attorney and fill them out. Understand what, it's, what it says. Understand what it means. I was shocked when I was in the, in the room with my mother and we were filling out the do not resuscitate and all that. And I, it never occurred to me that you had to say whether you wanted antibiotics or not. If I had not noticed that, then she might have contracted her, her infection and not being given an antibiotic because on her on her hospital form, it said that she did not want to take antibiotics. So you have to pay attention to what the words say, and you have to understand the implications of that. Do them today. If you do not have those documents, do them today. If your parents don't have those documents, do them today. If your children do not have those documents, call them up and say, you have to, you have to get this done today because we never know what's going to happen. On our way home today, as young as, as some of you are, you might have a need to have those documents. So please do that as a, just a favor to me. The other thing is to appoint a person, an advocate, and, a healthcare, and write out a health care proxy. These, these are the big things, but if, you're, uh, if you are a caregiver and a patient, a patient advocate, you might be overwhelmed by the fact that you're not a healthcare professional. There are a couple little things that I just want to point out. You can make a difference just by common sense. Look for the unusual when you're in a patient's room. See if something isn't quite right. If a pump was pumping before they went down to x-ray, on their legs to keep them from getting blood clots, and when they come back, it's not hooked up again, and it's not pumping, ask, 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 ask. Even if you're wrong, if they say, oh, the doctor discontinued that, it's okay. You can ask questions. It's all right. So ask the questions, observe. There are little things, just like having a tray brought to the patient, but they can't reach it. If you're an advocate, a patient, uh, and you're in the room with a patient, and you're going to leave, let someone at the desk know. Let them know how to get hold of you. But not only that, please make sure that the telephone is in, in reach of the patient, or that their water is in reach of the patient. Little things that you would think that a health care provider would do, but it doesn't always happen. Health carers. Healthcare professionals have always seemed above reproach, and we want to believe that everybody involved in healthcare uh, has a very personal and vested interest in our getting well. They do. But we are just human beings. 
And if I leave you with anything today, it's that everyone makes a difference. Everyone has a purpose. And in healthcare, with the things that are, are changing now, the things that, are, that need to be fixed, you're a part of that. You're a part of that when you go to visit a patient, when you have someone that you love in the room, or even when you're there. So if you, uh, if you walk away with anything today, it's not just gloom and doom. Um, the other thing is that you can find there are actual professional health care advocates. And that's the other thing that you need to be very aware of, that nurse case managers and, profe and professional health care um, advocates can serve you. Thank you very much.